All right, so if you want to run your mechanics wire up through here, it is a hell, but the secret that I have is to bend a little hook on it. That way, when you're going it through, it's rubbing against this nice smooth piece instead of the jagged end, because when you cut it, it's always going to be jagged. And then after you have that little hook in there, you take another piece of wire, add a hook. So when you shove it through and it goes up, right, it'll be sitting here because it gets stuck. You take your wire, go through your hole, but you can look down the end of the pipe and hook it and then pull it the way that you want. And that is the easiest way that I've found. All right, so when you're doing your wiring and you only want to do this once, so run all the wires you need at one time and then put a little crimp on it but give yourself an, a length over here and i'll show you why but it's going to take two hands so all right so that extra little bit you run down the wire with it and then you just wrap the wire as it goes up make sure at the end you take a pair of pliers twist it around there and then crimp it down because you don't want to go halfway through and have to do this again all right so one trick about wiring when it comes in a case just split the case and pull the wires out because you can lay the new wires into the case and then electrical tape it and it's giving you protection that you didn't have to pay for second cut your wires at different lengths right that way if the heat shrink wears off on this and starts rubbing into this you still have the connection of that but if the two heat shrinks are rubbing together right and the solder is hard so it gives it two hard spots to rub together so this just helps prevent uh the wires connecting over time all right and i could do that with a twisted pair but it really sucks doing that with a twisted pair so i go a little bit nuts on twisted pairs also another tip make sure because i guarantee i haven't done it yet today but i guarantee you that i will do it today where you cut your heat shrink and slide it on the wire before you fold them together otherwise you're going to rip it apart and do it all over again all right so prior to wiring or soldering you want to do this little y pattern if the wire is big enough like this one because this is a different gauge compared to the stock one then you can do it in threes i put them together like so and then i use both hands and screw them together and i'll show you what that looks like so that's what it's looked like i screwed them together and i had too much coffee today so i'm shaking it looks like but All right, now to do the rest. All right, so this is why I told you not to cut off the sheathing because you just split it open, tuck all your stuff in, and then once you make this all nice and pretty, tape it up, and you got a little bit more protection to your wires. All right, so this is what it looks like taped up, and then I'm going to run the excess farther than it needs to be up in here, right? I'm gonna take some of this engine sheathing that I got out of the trash. I actually got all these wires out of the trash because another technician did a job and he was going to throw them away. And I was like, I need a twisted pair, so I'll take it. And I'll run that in. I'll run the other sheathing down and hopefully inside it just goes right in. So it should be all right. And pretty much that's just how I wire up uh, handlebars on a Harley. Make sure you don't use butt connectors. Make sure that you properly solder. Don't be like me and cheap out on your solder because this solder has been underground and any solder that's been underground is just shot. So make sure you spend the extra money and go out and get some good solder. That way it melts properly and you don't have to waste a whole bunch of gas trying to get it to do what it needs to do. And uh, yeah, any more questions, just ask.